We welcome you to the Irwin Center in Austin, Texas. Big 12 basketball. It's the Kansas Jayhawks, 5-0 and in Big 12 against the Texas Longhorns, 2-3, and but undefeated at home this year. Only meeting, and it comes one year after Texas went up to Kansas, Allen Fieldhouse, and knocked off the Jayhawks, and that ended a 69-game home court winning streak. It's in the hands of Tyshawn Taylor for the Jayhawks. Here's Jeff Withy, joined by Relaford, Thomas Robinson, number zero, and there's Elijah Johnson. Good start for him. That's well, the jumper. He's an excellent three-point shooter, shot 40% a year ago, has struggled so far this year, but got a pure look and sprayed it. Now one of the six freshmen on this roster who has the ball in his hands, Julian Lewis, as Rick Barnes has mixed and matched his starting five once Big 12 play got underway. Here's Cabongo, Mike Cabongo, now out of Canada, Toronto. And Jacobin Brown, the junior, he's also got two seniors on the floor. Here's Lewis, four on the shot clock. Great Kansas defense. Terrific. On the left, Taylor, Johnson, Relaford, Thomas Robinson, and Jeff Whitty. On the right, Mike Cabongo, Brown, Jacobin, that's Julian Lewis, Alexi Wangwini, and Clint Chapman. They are both graduated seniors. Both got their degrees back in December. Entry pass taken away by Jacobin Brown into the hands of Cabongo. He'll take it all the way, blocked by Withy. And that's what Jeff Withy's been doing for Kansas. The ball is going to be theirs on the block shot and the deflection. Ninth year as the head coach in Lawrence, Bill Self. Previous stops, of course, at Illinois, Tulsa, Oral Roberts. Only two losing seasons in that long career, and they were the first two years he was a coach at Oral Roberts. Yeah, he's one of the outstanding coaches in this business of college hoops, and Johnson gets another wide open look. Relaford gets the long rebound. They look inside for Withy, body up by Chapman, stripped. Kansas, in his 14th season, Rick Barnes, head coach, Texas, 13 straight years in the NCAAs. They've got work to do to get back there this year. They certainly do, and if it's going to happen here today, they've got to do a good job defensively, and then they've got to be able to create some easy scoring opportunities for other people other than Jacobin Brown. Good double team here, and a nice find by Thomas Robinson. Relevant, strong, blocked. Chapman got it. Here comes Texas, three on two. Nice speed. Chapman wasn't ready for it, but he recovers in time to lay it off the glass. That's the example of what I'm talking about for Texas, um, Vern. They've got to create some opportunities in the open court because in the half court, they've struggled because the young freshmen just haven't quite been aggressive enough offensively. But in the open court, they can play with a little more freedom. Relaford for three. <laughs> Off the rim, Chapman rebound for the Longhorns. This is Julian Lewis, and now Cabongo. Mike Cabongo, one of the most highly recruited point guards in last year's recruiting class. Too strong. Robinson with a rebound. Thomas Robinson averaging a double-double, 17.8 points and 12-plus rebounds per game. Off the glass and good. I started to comment on the improvement of Jeff Withy. He's been so good at blocking shots, deflecting shots, getting rebounds, and keeping balls alive. And his improvement is among the best, I think, in the country from the start of the season till now. I mean, I've seen Gorgie Dane, Jane at Louisville. I would throw him in that category, but he certainly has made tremendous progress in his awareness and his presence inside, particularly at the defensive end. Well, he's a seven-footer, originally signed in Arizona. And now a redshirt junior out of San Diego, Jeff Withy. I mentioned Zhang from Louisville. You think about Fab Mello at Syracuse. Another vastly improved um, big guy. Good job by Cabongo. He uh, knocks it off one of the Jayhawks. It'll be Texas to inbound. Texas 11 and 0 at home this year. Not the strongest home schedule. Uh, I'm being kind. Yes, you are. Uh, 
12 and 6 for the year. They've really struggled on the road. Uh, were competitive against K State in their most recent game, and then a couple of bad turnovers toward the end when mm -hmm. the game was in the balance. Yep. Cost them. And that's part of having a relatively young team. Understanding the urgency that you have to play with, how you need to value every possession. Um, talking to both Rick Barnes and assistant coach Rob Lanier yesterday, they said they're starting to see some progress with this young team in terms of the urgency and intensity they need to play with. There's Rob Lanier to the left. Rob Rick Lanier, Barnes. he was uh, a staff uh, member of Rick Barnes, 99 to 2001. Got a head coaching job at Siena, didn't work out most recently. He has come from Billy Donovan's staff at Florida, where he spent four years. Terrific defensive pressure that time, Vern, by Kansas. You saw Texas starting its offense at the half court line, and excellent pressure on the basketball everywhere by the Jayhawks. Sheldon McClellan is on the floor now, another of the freshmen. He's a 6 4 guard wearing number one. He is out of Houston, Bel Air. Relaford. Here's Elijah Johnson. Here's Tyshawn Taylor. And that was Thomas Robinson. Nice. At the other end, Julian Lewis. So three freshmen now playing for Rick Barnes and the Longhorns. A 7 2 game. From the corner. Got it. Shooting 40% from the three-point line is Lewis in conference play. And we've got a break and a good start for this young Texas team at home. When your cable company keeps you on hold, you get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you go blow off steam, accidents happen. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. When people think you're tough, people want to see how tough. And when people want to see how tough, you wake up in a roadside ditch. Don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Get rid of cable and upgrade to Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Hey, could you hold that, please? All right. Here we go. Keep the change. Just over nine minutes to go. <laughs> Hello, Elijah. Me too. Not you. It's the sure sign of a good time. It's just right taste of Bud Light. Here we go. Apparently, I didn't get the Thong Thursday memo. The Ravens' brutal defense. Brady and the Patriots' explosive offense. They collide for the AFC Championship, Sunday on CBS. Kansas Jayhawks under Bill Self ranked seventh in both of the polls currently. 5-0, and 3-0 in two road games. Thomas Robinson, 17.8 at 12.3. The averages. And for the Horns, Mark. Unbeaten here at home, but they've really struggled on the road and at neutral sites. Jacobin Brown has been terrific. He just hasn't had much offensive help, but they have lost the last two games both on the road. But a pretty good start here for Texas into that first media timeout. Throw it back outside. Two on one now. Run for the left. And he takes it all the way off the feet. Is fouled by Jacobin Brown. And just a moment ago, Missouri beat Baylor up in Waco. So they keep chase with Kansas. Uh, that's back-to-back -back losses for Baylor now. They lost at Kansas on Monday night, and they lose at home today. That's a huge win for Missouri, a team that has struggled on the road. But I don't know if there's a more entertaining team in all of college basketball than the Mizzou Tigers. They typically play three or four perimeter players around Ratliff inside, and everybody can pass and handle and shoot. Now Relaford gets one more, and he's 0 for 2. Jonathan Holmes, another of the freshmen, number 10, mm -hmm. is on the floor. He's got it. Cabongo and McClellan, Juan Manee and Jacobin Brown. That's the five 
for the Texas Longhorns, who trail only by two. Jumper. Knocked it down. Knocked it on. Excellent pick and pop action that time, and that's what Jonathan Holmes can do. He's a big body, but he also has a nice touch. He's on to Chapman now. There's the entry pass. Robinson bodied up. And he traveled. And he traveled. How about the job by Alexi Wanmany? He was number 20. He was physical, Vern, and then he, he forced Robinson about a step off of his comfort zone and then was active with his feet. Take a look at this now. He's moving his feet. He doesn't allow Robinson to catch it in that sweet low block area, and you saw Robinson shuffle his feet. You know, talking to Bill Self prior to the game when you and I did, he mentioned one of the things that Robinson has really gotten better at is being patient right. in the post, but I think it was the defense that forced that turnover more than Thomas Robinson being impatient. Bill Self goes to his bench and Justin Wesley, a transfer out of Lamar University down in Beaumont, is on the floor. Tied at seven. That one kicked out of bounds. 16 remains on the shot clock. Bill Self's team played so well in that middle of a beta, but he was telling us, you know, you take that on a neutral floor, that's how significant the fans are at Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence. He said they made a huge, what you said, you thought it was worth a 14 point. At, at Allen Fieldhouse, yeah. I think on average, the home court is particularly in conference play is probably six or seven points, but you double that at a place like Allen Fieldhouse. Here's Taylor on the leak out, Tyshawn, that'll be goaltending on Jonathan Holmes. No question about this one, Vern. Tyshawn Taylor coming right at you, folks, behind the defense. And that clearly had hit the backboard and was on its way down. Actually, Tyshawn Taylor was bumped a little bit prior to shooting that, actually in the act, and thought he should have been at the foul line as well. Tyshawn Taylor, the enigmatic player for Kansas. Uh, has really played well the last couple of games, 28 each. Yeah. It wins over Iowa State and Baylor. 28 in each. That one's off the back line. Chased down by Elijah Johnson. Now it's Taylor. I would call that from enigmatic to excellent. Yeah, that's pretty excellent right there. Justin Wesley in transition. You know, Kansas has 89 dunks. Now that's 90. Right. That's five a game. I don't know of any teams no. that do that. They are so good, one, at getting out in transition off the defense, but they do an excellent job in the half court when they throw that ball off of screens. When the big guy screens and rolls, they throw it up to the rim, and they've got guys that can go get it and throw it down. Jacobin Brown, we mentioned the win at Lawrence last year by this Texas team. Kansas was then rated number two, and Jacobin Brown had 23 in that game, and he was one of the stars in the Texas win. Yeah, he was terrific. I think he went for most of those in the second half in that yeah. game. I think he had 17 of those points in the second half and really controlled things. He was the sixth man a year ago. They mm -hmm. lost everybody. Yeah. They lost seven players from last year. A couple of them were freshmen. Yeah. Corey Joseph and Trent, Tristan Thompson, both first round NBA draft choices. And here is Taylor to inbound. Taylor with the jumper. And that's when he is lethal. When he is knocking down the jump shot, as he has been doing of late, I don't think there's anybody any better at getting into the lane off the dribbling from the backcourt than him. And there's Holmes. Big fella showing you a nice touch, but maybe a tad quick on the trigger there, especially when you've struggled in Kansas. Has some positive momentum going here. 7 0 run. Taylor guarded by Cabongo. That's knocked away by Holmes. Touch last by Holmes, so it'll be Kansas to inbound. Well, I like the activity of Jonathan Holmes, Vern. He shows you good, quick feet. He's active, and he's obviously got a power conference body already. Now McClellan will sit down. Julian Lewis, who started the game, is back on number zero. Will be guarded by Chapman, who's also on the floor. This is Connor Tehan off the bench. Taken away, and Elijah Johnson misses from point blank range. Jacobin Brown guarded by Taylor. 
Nice job by Tyshawn to cut off the driving lane there. Jonathan Holmes misses another. Here's Taylor quickly up and in. Big time. That is big time work right there. And Sheldon McClellan got a very short rest. He's uh, going to come in now. Rick Barnes going to the bench. There's the switch with Wesley back on Jonathan Holmes. Cabongo, the freshman. Little mix up on that one. Chapman underneath. Good defense by Kansas. Excellent. Right Good rotation. Pressure on the ball. Help side is active and engaged. Five on the shot clock and a foul he is called. Foul is on Tehan. 11.30 to go first half. Probably the two best known of the Jayhawks starting five. Thomas Robertson, Tyshawn Taylor. Here's Robinson, the sixth man a year ago when he hides behind the Morris Twins. And Taylor now averaging 16 points per game. And Robinson, 13 double-doubles. He had one game, 30 and 20, 12.3 rebounds and 54%. A very emotional weekend part for Thomas Robinson. Mm -hmm. It was a year ago this weekend that his mom, Lisa, died of a heart attack at the age of 39. He was notified of the death the night before they played the Longhorns. The entire team went back for the funeral, and Bill Self was telling us it's very emotional for Thomas, obviously, but the Kansas community has rallied. He's got a young sister, Jayla, who's nine years old. There's the block underneath. The Kansas community has raised $300,000 and put it in a trust fund for Jayla Robinson to secure her education and any other needs she'll have as, as she grows up. A fantastic and marvelous gesture. And really, the family that KU has been for Thomas Robinson and Jayla has been nothing short of remarkable. Here's Relaford and Taylor. Rebound, one money. This is where I think Texas has to try to get some quick hitters if they can because the half-court defense so far has been stifling by the Jayhawks. There's a switch. Cabongo. Texas has missed its last seven shots. High screen for him for Jacobin Brown is defended by a good defender and relative. Deep shot in. Brown unable to convert. Taylor, feed, Relaford, goaltending. Eleven unanswered. Excuse me. And, and then on the tail end of a tough shot by Brown, the Jayhawks able to rebound and run. And you see Relaford gets it up on the glass and Wagmini from a different angle there. You see that he clearly got it on its way down after it got on the backboard. That one touched last by Robinson. Elijah Robinson, number 15, back on the floor. So it will be Texas ball. 18-7 out of a 7-7 top. Mm -hmm. It's been the defense of the Jayhawks. You've got a young and experienced team, although Mike Cabongo has had back to back double doubles in his last two games. There's not much room to operate. That ball has to really move crisply. Another tough shot by oh, the was it ever. And here's Relaford. He's got T hand right corner. Back instead to Elijah Robinson. by Juan Mane, double from Cabongo. Relaford kicks it out. Robinson saved by Kansas. And a foul is called. On Jacobin Brown, that's his second. Julian Lewis is back on the floor out of Lamarck. Nice well, Brown going to sit now. He has struggled shooting the ball for Texas, and he now has the two personal fouls. So where will Texas find some offense? Yes. 
I think they've got to try to do it and generate it off this end of the floor. Rutherford saves it. Here's Robinson way outside. Jumper. Oh, if he starts banking that in. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> off the glass for two. 13 unanswered now. This is reminiscent of what uh, Kansas did against Baylor late in the first half. That's right. They went on that mighty surge to come from a few down to 10 up at halftime and Lewis with the force. And it's not much happening offensively. No, no, no. For Texas trying to do it off the dribble and Kansas really on top of them, pressuring that basketball and making it tough for them. He had. Six minutes without a basket for the Longhorns. And Drew. Two more for Kansas. Timeout, Texas. Now let's take a look at our Applebee's neighborhood favorites. In 2003 in San Antonio, the Longhorns, led by T.J. Ford and Brandon Luton, knocked off the Michigan State Spartans to advance to the Final Four for the first time since 47. That 2003 Final Four featured two Big 12 teams, Texas, and the Kansas Jayhawks. Well, turnovers have been such a problem. And a number of them have been forced by this pressure of Kansas. Real active and aggressive with their hands and feet, bodying up the Texas perimeter players, rotating to the passes inside. It's really been a clinic. And you see, that's always a bad ratio when you have more turnovers than field goals made. Ooh. Uh, Rick Barnes was telling us that his team played so poorly in their loss at Missouri that he worked them really, really hard in the subsequent practice sessions, up to and including the visit to K-State, and he was not terribly unhappy right. with the effort at K-State. Uh, he's got to be disappointed this afternoon. One of the few times, though, they've been able to get solid penetration and get something yeah. inside. Most everything else, Vernon, has been scratching and clawing, trying to get a shot up on the perimeter. They were stuck on seven points for the better part of seven minutes. And points in the paint now, 14 to four. Robinson, jumper. Oh, I thought he was going to bank it in again. That's a tough shot for oh. Thomas Robinson there. He certainly has added to his package with the ability to knock down the straightaway jumper, but that was a force off the dribble. Nick, Mike Cabongo found McClellan for three. And the 30% three-point shooter cans one. And that cuts it to a 10-point deficit. You know, Vern, he's a better shooter than 30%, but a lot of it is shot selection. And that's the case with a number of young players. But as he recognizes what a good shot is, he's got the ability to be a really outstanding scorer. And that's an excellent move by Elijah Johnson. Johnson, number 15. Junior from Las Vegas, Nevada. And he's on the floor. Loose ball by Jack. Saved by Kansas Dish. Tipped out of bounds by McClellan. Nice hustle by Julian Lewis. Kansas with a big lead. Kansas has doubled up on Texas, and they've done so with dominance inside, 16 to 4. Points in the paint. Well, Mark, our first uh, visit to the Big 12. And uh, what are your well, impressions? This, well, this team here, Baylor, is extremely talented. Have now lost two in a row after rolling off 17 straight wins. I talked about Missouri earlier, one of the really entertaining teams in the country in Kansas really playing at a high level right now because they defense and rebound defend and rebound so well they always have a chance and the offensive play of Tyshawn Taylor has been quite excellent of late and Bill Self told us if Elijah Johnson can play to his offensive level that they really have a chance to to be quite good going forward and you see three of those teams all three in the top ten there will be some movement um, after Baylor drops a pair but no shame in losing to Kansas 
at Allen Fieldhouse or even Missouri. I mean, it's a home loss, which is tough to, to get your arms around. But nonetheless, you're playing an elite-level team. Here's Rutherford on the floor with Elijah Johnson. Justin Wesley Johnson, oh, too strong. Chased down by Jacobin Brown. Back on the floor despite the two fouls. And he will drive all the way and puts it up and in. Nice adjustment. Excellent adjustment. And I like the move by Rick Barnes. Jacobin Brown's a senior. He does have the two fouls. He struggled early, but you've got to get him out there and trust that he can play and not pick up a third foul because you need what he brings in leadership and offense. That was his first basket. He'd been 0 for 5. March Madness right around the corner. Sign up now at cbsports.com slash brackets to be notified when the bracket games launch. Jeff Withy, the junior. Among other things, he's outstanding at the free throw line. Yeah, 84%. Yes, he is. A nice stroke. It's a beautiful stroke. Yeah. Excellent rotation, follow through, all the things that you like to see in a good shooter. Kind of sweet to see it in a seven footer. Though, isn't it? <laughs> it has a little yes. different look to it. And a little unusual. Yeah. That's a nice stroke, too. Yeah. Young fella. This kid's got a chance to be special, I think. He's got a really good body. He's got tremendous range. It's just a matter of continuing to grow and put the work in, but he can put the ball in the basket. That's his second three. This is the foul is on Julian Lewis. And that's 16 fouls against Texas. Lewis. Now Robinson's going to come on back, replacing Justin Wesley. 26 17, 544 to go. Jonathan Holmes out. Alexi Wanmany is on the floor for the Longhorns. Taylor, relative no. Jacobin Brown's got it. Oh, yeah. Special basketball in transition by Jacobin Brown. Excellent job by the wings to run. And he looked off the Kansas defenders. That is nicely done. He's got Lewis on the right and then Chapman on the left. And put it right where he needed to. On the floor. So it bounces up to the chest of Chapman. And well away from the ball. A little chest bumping going on with Thomas Robinson and Alexi Wanmany. They were immediately separated and uh, got a couple of words in. That was. Here's the replay. Yeah, they got tied up a little bit, and that's probably about. I'd say that's probably about 510 lbs. Yeah. Of about 5% body fat. Yeah. And, and, and neither guy interested in giving up an inch. Why are you looking at me when you talk? <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Yeah, they got into it a little bit. That's a little extra, but again, both of these guys highly competitive, very physical, well put together. One minute he just graduated in December with a degree in his native language, French. That looks like English to me. Yeah. In any language, yeah, it's physicality. We knew what he was saying. And, uh, <laughs> Rick Barnes is going to set him down. Now, here's Chapman, the other senior. Chapman graduated in December and completes the three-point play. Chapman with his degree in corporate communications. You know, Vern, I mentioned earlier some of the most improved big guys in the country. Put Clint Chapman in that yeah. group as well in terms of guys that have progressed nicely since the start of the season. Well, this little run by the Longhorns has gotten the crowd up. Tough play by Relaford. He's so versatile, Vaughn, not only defensively, but offensively as well. McClellan, his third three in the last three minutes. Five-point game. Bobby T hands on the floor. Here's Taylor and Withy. Into the corner, T hand. No. Texas. Julian Lewis brings it up, puts it in the hands of Jacobin Brown as Cabongo is getting a rest now. The freshman point guard. 
Jacobin Brown, McClellan, Lewis, Chapman, and Jonathan Holmes. That's the five on the floor for Texas. Blocking foul. It's on Tyshawn Taylor, his first. And the 16th foul. Nice little surge here by Texas. The defense has been pretty solid for the most part, and it's picked up some, and then shot-making always helps, and mm -hmm. McFarlane has been able to do that to ignite his team and this crowd. McFarlane guarded by Tehan. Holmes. There's the screen, the pick and roll. From the corner, in and out. Offensive board, Holmes. Big time rebound there to pursue that loose arm. And another possession now for Texas. See the confidence growing with these young guys. They get some shots down and get a chance to score in transition off the defense and feel like they're back in it now. Can he do it again? No, not this time. Another offensive board and a foul called on the shot. Chapman shoots two when we come back. You're watching NCAA Basketball on CBS. Oh! 60 Minutes goes into the wild this weekend with three of our favorite stories. Don't miss the adventure Sunday on 60 Minutes. When you marry a girl... Ah! You forget I live here? I'm your wife. You marry her whole family. Don't miss the new hit comedy. Looking good. Rock. Thursday, only CBS. Ah! AFC Championship tomorrow on CBS, 3 o'clock Eastern. Baltimore Ravens, New England Patriots... And uh, right to go to the Super Bowl, it all begins with the special playoff edition of the NFL today. JB in the game, presented by Southwest Airlines. All right. Well, you got a number of single digits there when you talk about these two teams and where they rank. The Patriots, high octane offense. The Ravens, underrated, I think, offensively. Defense is their calling card. I think we see an upset. Do you? I think we see an upset. I well, think somehow the Ravens are going to find a way to stymie the brilliant Tom Brady in that New England Patriots offense. Here's Chapman. It's the first of two. And if if Clark's prediction comes true, that means one Harbaugh brother is in the Super Bowl. Well, John Harbaugh, the coach of the Ravens. And, of course, the Tom Crean family in Indiana has a vested interest in all this <laughs> because the other brother, Jim, coaches the 49ers. Wouldn't that be something? So the 49ers and the Giants on Sunday. Yep, we'll see what happens. How about this? 18 to 6 run. And the foul is going to be called on Wesley. Or the turnover. No, I think, the, I think you're right. I they think it's a foul. foul. Yeah. 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 Excellent pressure here. That's Jonathan Holmes denying the entry pass. And then Wesley guilty of the foul trying to get back to him. And right now, Texas has become the far more aggressive team. They're winning the rebounding battle. The loose ball battle has become theirs. And it's been fueled by, I think, partly the return of Jacobin Brown. Even right. though he's only made one bucket, he does have four assists. And then the play of Clint Chapman and the shot making of Sheldon McClellan. Here's Jacobin Brown, gets it back. Johnson follows him. There's the switch with the out. Nice dish. Oh, yeah. And then he misses the point blank shot, did Jonathan Holmes. Now, Texas with Wesley. Relifer, I mean, uh, Kansas, with it. Into the corner. With it. Sheldon McClellan. He has stepped into some good looks and made the Jayhawks pay for giving him space. And Jacobin Brown found he finding him in transition. That's one of the best times to shoot that triple. If you've got that floor spread and your point guard has his head up. Living with another one. 
Tyshawn Taylor's on for Relford. You know, talking to Rick Barnes yesterday, he talked about a possession here or there, a costly turnover, critical junctures. This is a critical juncture for this young Texas team. How are they going to finish this half? They were down big early. They've surged back into the game. Now can they stay attentive to details offensively and finish this half in a positive way? Kansas, on the other hand, has got to get better on the defensive board. Texas has been able to get second shot opportunities to help fuel this run. There's to Kevin Brown into the corner. It goes for Julian Lewis. Jalen Bond, another freshman, is on the floor for the first time now for Texas. He wears number two. Here's Lewis. Nope. Out of bounds. Kansas ball. Coming up on AT&T at the half, Tracy Wolfson and Seth Davis will get you caught up on the latest scores and highlights on a busy day in college basketball. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. By the way, I don't know if you heard Urban Meyer last week, but we had him as our guest. Yes. As he was saying goodbye to us, he looked at you, and then he looked at me, and he said, I'd much rather be interviewed by Tracy Wolfson. Oh, he did mention that. Yeah, yeah. I did catch that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I would concur. <laughs> well, how about Thomas Robinson's day? I'll tell you what, Texas has done a pretty good job on him, but here's one of those opportunities early. Kansas does such a good job of penetrating and robbing. This is the added skill set that Robinson has put in his package. The ability to go off the dribble either all the way to the goal, as we saw, or after two dribbles to pull up for the jump shot. Tyshawn Taylor at the line. Got all of that one. Well, we mentioned the emotional day for Robinson. Also in a 25-day span, he lost his mom, Lisa. He lost his grandmother and his grandfather. All of that inside of a month. Terribly tragic. Yep. And this young man, I saw a special feature done about that whole ordeal that he encountered and went through and continues to work through. And it's really, in many ways, ignited a newfound passion and perspective in regards to what basketball means to him. And you can see him playing with that type of energy and focus and hunger. And uh, sometimes out of a difficult situation, some positive things can come forth. And clearly his drive and motivation is at a different level. Cabongo back on the floor. He got a pretty good rest. Into the corner. Now Kansas up by six with 137 to go before the break. Jumper, Jacobin Brown. No. Withy is fouled as he comes up. Comes down with a rebound. Well, next Saturday, our group is going to move to Waco for a Big 12 clash between these Texas Longhorns and the Baylor Bears. Baylor came into the week, ranked third, undefeated. They've now lost back to back and Kansas, Missouri are on top of the Big 12. Iowa State sitting there at three and two. Kansas State on the shoulders of Rodney Magruder, a team to keep an eye on. Boy, he's put up some nice numbers here recently. 92 seconds to go before the break. There you go. We got a couple of nice looking, nice looking shooters in the big guys both ways. I mean, with the, I don't know if he's missed a free throw. Yeah, missed one. Oh, he did miss one earlier. Four or five. There it is right there as I requested it. Right on time. It's a team game here. You know, it's great to know. Not just between the lines, but no, right no. here courtside as well. <laughs> Texas has hit a bit of a speed bump here now after they've been in late shot clock situations the last couple of trips. But when they had that run, they were able to flow a little better and get earlier opportunities. Jumper from the corner for three. No. Tipped. Elijah Johnson has it. So another miss for Texas now. They got it in three. They now trail by 11. That's what Kansas can do from you, do, do to you. They can ignite spurts with their defense. And that's what they've been able to do here over the last few possessions. Tyshawn Taylor now has 12, and he's coming off back to back games. That's Withy with the hook. Well, Kansas 
22 straight tournament appearances. That leads the country. Duke next, Michigan State, Texas trying to get in for the 14th time. They've got to find some wins in conference play now. It's not going to be easy for them. Not at all. Kansas has called time. They've reestablished a double digit lead up by 11. Hey, where you been? Took my car again, huh? Yes. Yes, I did. 270 horsepower, plenty of torque. Yeah, it's a blast. The new Regal GS from Buick. Another intriguing week in NCAA basketball. Syracuse 20 and 0. And on the road later today at Notre Dame. And they'll also see this hot Cincinnati Bearcats team. How about the way Mick Cronin's team has played since the unfortunate brawl with Xavier? And then Anthony Davis, the preeminent freshman in the country, I think. He's um, a step above with his ability to block shots, chain shots, and he's also got an offensive arsenal that I think is going to continue to blossom as we go through the rest of this season. Anthony Davis picked up four more blocks today in Kentucky's win over Alabama. Here is Jacobin Brown, only three points, and he's by far the leading scorer for this Texas team with an average of 19 per game. Now the Bongo chases down Tyshawn Taylor. Elijah Johnson, Tehan in the corner. Oh, boy. I think that Kansas Jayhawks may have gotten away with an illegal screen. Jacobin Brown got hung up on what appeared to be a slightly moving screen. No call. So it's all legal. And Tehan doing what he does. Knocked down three. So Kansas showing you the resolve and the poise after Texas had made that run to tighten up defensively and then put together a spurt at the offensive end. Coven Brown, will he take the last shot? They'll start the play right now. And Elijah Johnson, there's Brown fade away. Not there. Well, Kansas jumped off by 15. Bill Self's team established the lead. Texas got within three, and then Kansas ends on an 11 to two run. When we come back, We'll be in our New York studio with Tracy Wolf. Halftime at the Irwin Center in Austin, Kansas, leading by 12, 39, 27. Vern Lundquist, along with Clark Kellogg, you said the two minutes to go in the half. Texas within six. Could they stay within reach? They did not because they missed shots. They got some decent opportunities, didn't convert, and then Kansas took full advantage of their opportunities at the offensive end as a result. And in the first half, a good, productive half from both Taylor and Robinson. Thomas Robinson did not get many touches, but he was three or four. I thought Tyshawn Taylor had a splendid first half. For Texas, it was Sheldon McClellan. He was really the catalyst in the little surge that Texas had. And at the end of the first half, the huge 11-2 run gives Kansas that double-digit lead. And the shot chart. And you look at Jacobin Brown. I thought he did a nice job orchestrating the offense with six minutes to go. But he's made, he's, he took some tough shots early, Vern. But I thought the last four shots that he took were shots that he would love to have again. And he needs to knock down some of those in the second half. Coke, zero first half stats. Hello? All Kansas. How about the assist number? I mean, they made 14 baskets, did the Jayhawks, and they had nine assists. That's an excellent ratio. Anytime you're assisting on 55% or more of your made baskets, that's usually a pretty good indication of moving the ball and also balance. Tyshawn Taylor takes it strong. He is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Kansas wins. Missouri knocked off Baylor in Waco earlier today. So the Bears lose two in a row, fall to four and two. And then on down, you see Texas at two and three. Uh, and down at the bottom of the list, Texas Tech. Second foul on Cabongo. Here is Tyshawn Taylor. If you are a Kansas fan, 
This is the most noteworthy significant stat of the afternoon. I know what you're going to say. Go right ahead. Zero turnovers for number 10. And that's been one of the things he struggled with. But he's a playmaker. And just being a little more discreet in his decision making, having better judgment, will allow him to keep that turnover number down. But I think also the coaching staff realizes that he's going to do far more good than bad most times. And on occasion when he does make a mistake or two, just roll with it. Wyman eight guarded by Robinson. Here's Sometimes with him, it's a mistake of three or four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, to one well, we had a fascinating conversation with <laughs> Bill Self about that. And you had, you had a little advice for life for me about lowered expectations. Yeah, I think you've got to be willing to lower the expectations. You don't want to lower the bar when you're striving for excellence, but lower expectations reduce the level of frustration in most circumstances. And I think that's part of what the Kansas coaching staff has come to grips with. They know Tyshawn Taylor is terrific at getting into the lane, and on occasion, he will make some plays that you wouldn't expect a senior point guard to make, but live with them and move on, and it seems to be working quite well for Taylor and his team. Nice dish to Robinson. Oh, the flash short, Withy. So I love that activity by Jeff Withy. Yep. Again, Robinson only had four field goal attempts in the first half, and you know coming out of the locker room at halftime that Kansas will be intentional about trying to get him more touches early. But having a guy like Withy opposite Robinson, when he commands double teams, with, if he does miss, that leaves Withy loose on that weak side board to come up with offensive rebounds. And there is a significant foul. That's the third on Alexi Wanmany. So the senior takes his place on the bench. Relaford. Elijah Johnson, Tyshawn Taylor, Withy, and Robinson. Johnson. Rim. The follow no. And Julian Lewis, the freshman number zero, gets it for Texas. So a good activity again by Withy, Vernon. Jumper and Robinson short. And who will get this one? Looks like it might be Robinson. It is. That's his third. That's interesting. It certainly is because Robinson wants to stay on the floor and Bill Self is trying to figure out whether he's going to allow that to be the case or not. And right now, it looks like Thomas will stay on the court. Not a lot of depth on that Kansas bench. Not at all. You got Wesley and Tehan have played, right. but not significant offensive contributors. Tehan's a pretty good shooter. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's a specialist. He knocks down that three-point shot, and with the way Taylor can penetrate, and Robinson draws attention inside. He'd like to have a marksman from the perimeter. Jacobin Brown with a little turnaround jumper. It is good. 41-29. Here's Taylor at the other end. Wow. I tell you what, this young man is playing at a really, really high level, Vern. I mean, his decision making is much improved. He's actually knocking down the perimeter shot at a much better rate. And as I said in the first half, when he does that, as Chapman gets a good look, when he makes perimeter shots, he's really difficult to guard. Here's Taylor. No call. Point blank miss. Hell ball. Possession arrow, Texas. I think the partisan crowd here wanted an offensive foul there on Tyshawn Taylor. I don't think so. I think nope. it was a loose ball, a little bit of incidental contact. I'm much more comfortable with allowing him to play there. I don't think Rick Barnes would uh, get in a canoe with you right no, now. No, he wouldn't, but that's okay. We can agree to disagree. I mean, I think anytime there's incidental questionable contact let him play now you might have a case for an offensive foul there but not enough for me to blow the whistle if i had I, I understand i learn each week it's a big boy game out there every now and then you're going to get hit and every time there's contact or somebody falls down doesn't mean that there's been a foul committed especially in loose ball situations that ball uh, foul called on elijah johnson now jacobin brown tough shot now he can Whoa. do that and he's going to have to get going, I think, in order for Texas to have a chance to really get back in this. 
And they're going to check whether it's a two or a three. It was ruled a two. So looking at the replay, here's Jacobin Brown. And he's pretty well guarded here. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see. That's Guess a try. Ah, that that's, looks like a triple from I you. think that's a yeah. three. Yeah, I think that's a triple. Yeah, it's a triple. Oh, clearly. Clearly. Uh, that's three all day long. Yep. So Brown hits a triple. We've got 17.04 to go in the ball game. And a 12-point margin. If you just uh, joined us, Kansas jumped off to a 15-point lead midway through the first half. Longhorns fought back, got within three, but then the Jayhawks ended the half with an 11-2 run. And here's Taylor. Nice, strong move. Blocked by Chapman. And Chapman fighting for the rebound. It comes down to McClellan. And here is Jacobin Brown. And it's blocked by Wesley. Good activity both ways there, partner. Better come strong or don't come at all. Either end. Excellent work by Wesley there. But I like the aggressiveness of Jacobin Brown. We'll try to play through him quite a bit here the rest of this game, I think, Vern. Chapman from McClellan. There's Jacobin Brown. That's the three. That is off the mark. Horn for the offensive board. Taken away by Whippy. Here comes Johnson. How about Jacobin Brown? And Holmes at the other end for Texas. Texas rebound. They can get it to single digits. Chapman. Great block by Whitney. Here's Johnson. All the way up off the glass and good for Kansas. Pretty good pace right now. Tremendous pace. Good activity both ways. Kansas just has a little more firepower. Even with Robinson on the bench with the three fouls. One of the questions coming in was who else would provide offense if Jacobin Brown didn't for Texas. That one's a miss. And he's having a tough time shooting it, but that's a shot that he likes to get. He does a really good job, Vern, of creating space with change of pace dribble and using his body to get the room he wants. And Taylor, boy, if he made that one. Oh, I think Rick Barnes would have been looking at the floor for a while because you want to force him to shoot the perimeter shot. Here's Brown rejected by Libby again into the hands of Julian Lewis, the freshman. Here's Lewis, jump stop. Foul called. Time is as well, 46-34. When you pay too much for cable, you throw things. When you throw things, people think you have anger issues. When people think you have anger issues, your schedule clears up. When your schedule clears up, you grow a scraggly beard. When you grow a scraggly beard, you start taking in stray animals. And when you start taking in stray animals, you can't stop taking in stray animals. Stop taking in stray animals. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Welcome back to Hack Job. Today, we're with the Gilberts. Okay, guys, are you ready to see your new kitchen? <laughs> Let's go! Take a look! Oh, here we go! It looks amazing! Eating 
didn't do anything. We just put Bud Light on the counter. Exactly! It totally opens it up. We gave it a fun vibe. Clearly, this is a room people want to hang out in. It's the sure sign of a good time. It's just right taste of Bud Light. Here we go. The landscapers are here. Nice! We are back in Austin during the half. I had a chance to go up and say hello to Coach Daryl Royal, one of the legends in college football, head coach here. 57 to 76. He was a young head coach when I was an even younger broadcaster starting my career in Austin. And I've had two heroes in my life. One was Dope Walker, and that man was the other. Wow. He nice to see him here. Great man. Great man. And great to see him here. Battling, battling some health issues. But uh, loves Rick Barnes, loves the program. I talked to Matt Brown. The current head coach here at Texas, he said, uh, Coach Royal is here. Why don't you go say hi? Mm -hmm. Now Florida State leading Duke by one. And Tennessee over UConn by three. And a foul here. Well, Jacobin Brown has struggled three of 14 so far. Early on, he was forcing it a bit against tough defense, but I think he got some quality looks later in that first half that he just didn't knock down. And in the second half, he's gone for six points. He'll have three, three free throws here, fouled behind the arc. But this is the kind of guy, and we saw it last year in this game, mm -hmm. where he can get going and can make tough shots. He can create space for his shot. Well, he has, have a uh, chance, and he's only, what does he miss, one free throw or two in conference, but I think he's at 95 or 96 percent. That's right. He is the fourth all-time leading free throw shooter in Texas history for his career, 86 percent. He's six of six today, so he's missed one in conference play. Mm -hmm. To foul on Holmes as he's got his hands out too far away from him and dealing with Thomas Robinson. Bill Self has Robinson back in the game even though he has the three fouls. Took him out for a minute there to buy him a little time. And Rick Barnes brings in Juan Minnie to match up with Thomas Robinson. Those two guys getting to know each other quite a bit today and Taylor. Well, that's the one he typically makes, Vern. Yes. Here comes Jacobin Brown. Nine-point difference. 13.40 to go. Relaford out on Brown. Squeezes through. Ball's on the floor. Only one network brings you TV's number one drama, number one comedy, number one new drama, and number one new comedy. Only CBS. One minute. That's his fourth foul, so a little anguish in his body language as he heads back. The young man from Cameroon who uh, was discovered as a basketball player by R.C. Buford and his wife, Beth, general manager of the Spurs, during a trip to Cameroon when Wadmany was 16 years old. Now here's Taylor. Wonderful game so far today. Drives it strong, floater, got it. You cannot keep him out of the lane, Vern. He's got speed, he's got strength, he's got pretty tight handle, and he's got change of pace. And he's got 19 points on yeah. six of nine. <laughs> and that foul is on Wesley. And that's four on Justin Wesley. So Jeff Withy is back on the floor. And Wesley's got to walk by Bill Self. <laughs> well, with Thomas Robinson with three fouls, Wesley's an important guy because, again, there's not much depth on the front line, actually on the bench at all for Kansas. And he's the one front line guy that could have perhaps bought Withy and Robinson a little more time resting. Not now. Lewis. I think it's going to be important. They've got to play through Jacobin Brown, Brown, but they also need somebody else to get going. And the foul is going to be called on Withy. The shot missed. That's three on Withy. So the aggregate number of fouls piling up here. 
Good aggressive take here by Sheldon McClellan. And he took a shot right in the midsection area there. He's trying to shake off. McClellan at the line. I think we might see Kevin Young off the bench for the first time today. Yes. Here comes Kevin Young as they'll have to rest Jeff Withy now. Young, a junior transfer from Loyola Marymount in California where he played two years. And Taylor's going to get a rest. Elijah Johnson back on the floor. Saw Kevin Young in the win against Ohio State. He was really a major factor there. I think he went for 14 points in that game and helped derail the Buckeyes. Well, that was a game Ohio State lost, but played without Jared Sullivan. Mm -hmm. This Kansas team, Bill Self was saying, you know, we got, we got a pretty good schedule. They lost to Kentucky. And the foul is going to be called on Kansas. I think they got um, Julian Lewis. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Julian Lewis. He actually was in great position, but then he pushed off a little bit with the off arm, and the official caught it, and it was the right call. Relaford will inbound. Whoops. Picked up by Jacobin Brown. Oh, he's got him. There you are, Jalen Bond, number two. Twelve eleven to go. Bond from Brown. Longhorns have cut the lead to 48-41. CBS 11 and Garland. Together, coverage you can count on. We are back in Austin. Let's take a look at the AT&T fast analysis. Well, we're going to take a look at Tyshawn Taylor. He's got the ball right here. Defender here, defender there, and a lot of room right in the middle of the lane area. And he's good getting into the paint without this kind of daylight. Takes it right to the rim. Late rotation and Taylor doing what he's done so effectively here in his last few ball games. Now you see Danny Manning with his uh, chin, still the all-time leader in scoring for Texas. And Danny led the Kansas Jayhawks to the NCAA title in uh, 1988. Elijah Johnson. Trying to get it into Thomas Robinson if they can. Bond doing a nice job yes, trying to deny him. He's moving his feet, maintaining good body contact, and he's still, because of the intentionality of the perimeter guys, right. to get it inside, and Thomas Robinson doing his work with the lower body, he's able to beat pretty good defense there. Robinson earlier this year had a, a game against North Dakota, 30 points and 21 rebounds. And that was the first 30-20 game. Here's the shot short since 1961. There's Jalen Bond for two. Off the offensive rebound by Clint Chapman. He's had a really strong game here today, Vern. Short timeout taken by Texas. This new AT&T 4G LTE is fast. Hey! Did you guys hear? That Mary got engaged. That's so 42 seconds ago. Thanks for the flowers, guys. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Ooh, are you guys signing up for the free massage? So 32 seconds ago. Hey, guys, you hear? Frank's cat's sick. Yeah, we heard. Do you want to sign the card? Did you know the guys from China are in the office? Shula. Stay a step ahead with the 4G LTE Galaxy S2 Skyrocket. Only from AT&T. On your left, the Kansas foul situation. Leslie with four, Robinson and Whippy with three apiece. For Texas, Juan Mani is uh, playing with four fouls. He's actually on the bench, and Jonathan Holmes has three. With 11.22 to go, this is the only meeting, by the way, scheduled for these two, unless they meet in the Big 12 tournament, which they did last year in the championship game, and that was a Kansas win. Relaford probes. Too strong off the glass. Tip. Jalen Bond with a rebound. Number two. Now Jacobin Brown. Taken away by Tehan. Brown never saw him. Bit of a high-risk pass. 
but I like the idea of trying to beat Kansas down the floor so they don't get to set that tough half court defense. Dehan goes baseline and kicks it back outside. Kevin Young. Here's Robinson on the perimeter. Elijah Johnson. Into the corner. Tehan, his specialty. Yeah. Robinson, his specialty. A rebound, a foul, and a free throw. Big time. Good execution that time by the Jayhawks. They got a three-point shot for their best three-point shooter. And then Robinson gobbling up the extras. And he'll shoot a foul shot when we come back. CBS Sports NCAA basketball coverage is sponsored by Applebee's. Resolve to have it all with Applebee's new under 500 calorie menu. State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. And by Lexus and their pursuit of perfection. Kansas leading 52-43. It has gotten a little physical at times. Not for the meek out there, Vern. Robinson and Juan Mini going at it. McClellan and Taylor, I mean, both of these teams have given tremendous effort. There's been a lot of contact, and I like the way it's been officiated, quite I honestly. Yeah. I mean, there's been a rhythm and flow. It has been physical, but the pace has been good, and you've got to come strong. Mike Stewart, Randy Heimerman, and Patrick Adams, the officiating crew today. Here is Robinson. Mentioned that he had that 30-20 uh, game. The last was by Wayne Hightower in 1961. There were seven others in Kansas history. Little trivia question now. Seven 30-20 games. Are his initials WC? You would be ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Pay the man. <laughs> Will Chamberlain. Now you teed that one up. Yeah, I know I did. 30-20, that's rarefied air. Cool. And that guy was rarefied air in a big way, Will Chamberlain. One of the all-time, all-timers. Now, Clint Chapman at the line. Perfect from the free throw line. He was hit nine offensive rebounds in that game the other night. And a very good shooting percentage. This Texas team, despite the loss, was 19 of 21 from the line. And they're 11 of, uh, they're 12 of 12 today. Vern, they're doing enough other than making shots here. Right. I mean, they're scrapping, they're winning the rebounding battle. They've been perfect at the free throw line. They just have not been able to knock down enough shots against a good Kansas team. Jonathan Holmes, Robinson goes over him in Kansas. That's so nice. That's an example of his patience and poise. Jacobin Brown doesn't win. That's for three. I think they're going to check. I think they're going to see if perhaps his foot was inside the arc. The two top scorers for their respective teams as we take a look at Jacobin Brown in transition. He pulled up for this three. And you see the right foot. Wow. That's close. Uh, I think he may have grazed it, Vern. Let's see. Uh, uh. Is it indisputable? Boy, a white shoe uh, and a white line. Yeah. Called a three. Yeah. From there. Uh, I let it stay. I think you may be right, uh -huh. partner. Yeah. Just. Uh, now that. That uh, appears that yeah, it may it does. be. Yeah, <laughs> just because. But that might be because of the shutter speed of the camera, maybe. Uh, yeah, I think. From that angle, it clearly looks like he may be on the line. Yep. It's a two. That was a definitive angle. I don't think there's much doubt. And good job of officiating. <laughs> they looked at each other, the two of the three, and said, I don't know. What do you think? So they went and got it right. We near the midway point. Kabongo is back on the floor. There's Robinson. And it's Holmes. Now Jacobin Brown. Excellent defense that time by the Texas Longhorns inside. They went up without coming down and committing a foul. Entry pass from Cabongo. The freshman point guard averages 28 minutes per game. Rick Barnes has had him on the bench. He's only played 15 today. Mm -hmm. They played Jacobin Brown quite a bit at the point guard spot. Oh, he misses that up and under. He's looking to draw a foul there. Robinson with Chapman back. Holmes has got Withy right now. Here's Elijah Johnson.
Can't keep that with him. Robinson, soft jump shot. Rebound. Sheldon McCullough. Holmes for three. Sellout crowd was ready to erupt to that one. That's a good quality look, though. You push the ball ahead. You got the defense compressing to the paint. And he's a pretty good shooter, so those are the kinds of opportunities you want if you're Texas, but you've got to begin to convert some of them. There's a whistle and a foul. And it's on Jonathan Holmes, and that is his fourth. So the bigs for Texas, Juan Mane with four. And now Jonathan Holmes heads to the bench with his four. So Jalen Vaughn, number two. That's a 6-7 replacing a 6-7. He's on. And Robinson will shoot from the free throw line. He's only a 50% free throw shooter in conference play. And Texas gets a break there on that play. Oh, my goodness. Great feed from Cabongo. Chapman missed. But Jalen Bond is there with a the follow shot. And it is a five-point lead. Crowds up. Become an important cog, and he has been. Yeah, he certainly has found a nice little rhythm, much more so than he was able to do in the first half. But he's the kind of guy that can give you a lot of points in a limited amount of time, Vern. And he's got the freedom, and they obviously need him to do that. Just marginally better in his field goal percentage in the second half. Whippy gets another. Travis Relaford's going to come on for Connor Tehan. Very interesting here, Vern, that Kansas has been able to do just enough to keep Texas at bay. The Longhorns have hung around because they've out-rebounded Kansas. They've been perfect at the foul line. And if not for woeful shooting, the Longhorns might be on top here. Yes. So Kansas has to tighten it up and try to push this lead back out to double digits because I think the longer Texas hangs around, this kid here, number 14, Jacobin Brown, can make enough shots to win a game for you if it's close. Clock shows 8-10 remaining. Chapman, turn around, jump and back. And he's having some kind of game. Yes. Clint Chapman, we talked about him earlier, but he's had a real presence at both ends today. Average of six, he's got 13 today. Here's Taylor, strong, up and under. Robinson there, kind of a lucky bounce. Fortunate bounce, you're right. Yeah. Five on four, though. Great job by Texas to keep playing because Taylor was down on the floor underneath his own basket, and Cabongo was able to walk into a transition three. Taylor limping, time is called. When he went up for the layup, came down hard and looks like he's favoring his right ankle or his right knee, not sure which. Time out. Yeah, I'm married. Does it matter? You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake. From State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at 3 in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis? She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so... Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. Texas has caught within four despite shooting only 35%. And Tyshawn Taylor injured on the last Kansas possession. Well, he drove in, 
and came down awkwardly there. You could see his landing was very awkward. Not sure exactly what he hurt, but he's sitting and watching right now. And as a result of him being down, Texas had a five on four advantage and Cabongo was able to take advantage. You know, Texas, while only shooting 35% for the game, Vern, they've shot 43% here in the second half to only 33% for Kansas. The bench points 21 to 5 in favor of Texas. Johnson looks inside for Robinson. And that's where you need to go if you're Kansas. How about Chapman? Here comes Cabongo. He's got Jacobin Brown. There's the dish inside to Bond. Now Jacobin Brown guarded by Withy up. No. Well, the AFC Championship game tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern. Jim and Phil will be there. Baltimore at New England. Mr. Kellogg has gone out on the limb and predicted a Baltimore upset. It'll begin with a special edition of the NFL today, presented by Southwest Airlines, JB and the guys. And at the line will be Bond, and Tyshawn Taylor's back on now. Mm -hmm. So a quick fix for him, good. He's had a really marvelous game, zero turnovers, and there's the first miss from the line for Texas in this ball game. Under seven to go. I think Kansas has to look to try to get that ball inside. Robinson's trying to establish his position on the low box. Now he's got it, muscled up by Bond. Back outside, Relaford. Nope, and there's Chapman again. Excellent box out. The Longhorns have really done a nice job on both backboards. Cabongo brings it back outside. And right now it's about shot quality. The execution. You've got to get good shots every time down. Brown. Oh, if Jacobin is shooting it, you'll take any shot. When he let it go, I looked at you, and what was going through my head was, that ain't what you were talking about. has never led there within one right now well you know both teams are in the penalty so we circle that because in a tight game obviously texas has shown its ability to knock down free throws they've only missed one today and on the year in big 12 play the longhorns are 74 percent from the line versus 67 percent for kansas so that could very well be a factor and that guy there he has not made a lot of shots he's not made a high percentage of his shots but there's nobody in the country that I would rather have. There's nobody else that I'd rather have shoot it than a guy like Jacobin Brown because of his ability to get usually a good shot, but also to make tough shots. Paul Sean Taylor goes by the freshman. Up and under blocked. Hell ball. Possession arrow, Kansas. But how about the play by Chap? Well, I tell you what, excellent play by Taylor here. Strong take. And actually, he got blocked by the backboard because Chapman was there. So that was a hell ball created by the backboard. Rick Chapman, the senior out of Canby, Oregon. Here's Taylor, a senior as well for Kansas. Robinson, air ball. Knocked, and Withy's going to get called for the foul from behind. That's four on Jeff Withy. One and one. I think Chapman's going to be at the line. He was the one who got fouled. Boy, he's had a real presence defensively and on the boards. He's an excellent free throw shooter, but that possession started with a tough shot by Robinson. Chapman for the tie. He's five of five today. Chapman with another free throw for the first Texas lead of the ball game.
Taylor. Wesley. Foul on Texas. And the foul is on Jacobin Brown, his third. Wesley at the line. Not his strength. He's 53% for the year. Chapman. That's nine. One away from a double double. Mike Cabongo has the ball in his hands, guarded by Elijah Johnson. Now Jacobin Brown, guarded by Tyshawn Taylor. Nearing the five and off. Brown back outside. Chapman almost taken away. Eight on the shot clock. Brown jumping. Chapman, loose ball. Texas, Texas ball. And a fresh 35. A really important that Texas look to play through Jacobin Brown, Vern, but they also have to attack a little earlier. So they've got an opportunity to get whatever the defense might allow. You know they're going to key on Brown, but with ball movement and a little bit more of an early attack, I think they might have an opportunity to get something at the rim or a high-quality shot for somebody else. You don't want to keep fighting late shot clock situations if you're Texas. And Cabongo with a costly turnover. It's been a problem for the young man from Toronto. In their most recent loss against K-State, he had a couple late games when they uh, had a chance. He had six turnovers in that K-State game. But it's been a low turnover game both ways to this point. 15 between both teams. Yes. See what Kansas does here. I would expect them to try to get it inside to Robinson or have penetration availability for Tyshawn Taylor. To the corner, tip. Robinson to the offensive oh! side. And slams it home. Kansas back up by one. <laughs> Jacobin Brown off the glass. Texas by one. That's a perfect example of attacking early. And Texas has to do as much of that as they can. Because Kansas is really good in the half court defensively. Robinson has it from Relaford. Now it's in the hands of Tyshawn Taylor. Picked up by Mike Cabongo. Jumper three. Off the mark. Rebound McClellan. Three and a half to play. Cabongo comes back outside. They look for Brown in the corner for three. Six out of 21. But every one of the six has been significant. Texas leads. Jayhawks have one timeout remaining. Both teams with nine team fouls. So we're one away from the double bonus and a 15 to 4 run by Texas. They claim their first lead of the ball game on two free throws from Clint Chapman, who has had an outstanding game. And now, Tyshawn Taylor, joined by Relaford, Robinson, Withy, and Johnson. Starting five on the floor for the Kansas Jayhawks. It's got to go inside, either to Robinson on the post or dribble penetration for Taylor. The ball has to get into the paint area somehow, somewhere. Jumper, yes. Well, maybe 12 feet is okay. <laughs> but they were looking inside. Elijah Johnson with the jumper. And sometimes being intentional about looking in there is just as important as throwing it in when you're talking about getting a good shot. Here's Chapman. Little soft jump, way off the mark. 
Robinson grabs the air ball. Kansas with a chance to tie or take the lead. 2.29 to go. High screen set by Robinson. Taylor got another one. And a foul. Big time shots by Johnson and Taylor. Nice soft jumper, Tyshawn Taylor. He will shoot a free throw when we return. We at Bud Light, like most advertisers, were going to run a 3D commercial this year. In fact, we made one, but it didn't test well. Here we go. Actually, it tested too well. We concluded that running this commercial would have been inappropriate, okay. so we didn't. You're welcome, America. It's the sure sign of a good time. The just right taste of Bud Light. Here we go. We'll be here if you get off early. Is he working the late shift again? Yep. as Tyshawn Taylor has a free throw to give Kansas the lead again. 69% for the year. Really impressive the way Elijah Johnson and Tyshawn Taylor stepped into mid-range jumpers to put Kansas back on top right now after this place was really rocking after Jacobin Brown's three gave Texas a four-point lead. Here's Jacobin Brown guarded by Relaford. Relative, their most versatile defender, and he's got size to go along with that strength and quickness. Trap knocked out of bounds. Well, you want to stay in the middle of the floor if you're operating offensively for Texas here. You don't want that sideline or the baseline to be an additional defender. Now they've got it back in the hands now with two minutes to go. Jacobin Brown guarded by Relaford. Relaford puts a body on him, call for the foul. Tenth team foul. So Texas will shoot two. So tough to defend a guy like Brown, who's so clever with the ball, and has excellent change of pace. They're looking to set a screen for him, and Relaford did a pretty good job, just got to step out of position. 84% for the year. 86% for his career. He's perfect today, and he's got one more to put the Longhorns back on top by one. Timeout, Texas. Rick Barnes says, let me call a timeout right here. 153 to go. Kansas one timeout, Texas two, both teams. Double bonus, possession arrow favors Texas. And uh, what do you expect here? Well, again, the way Johnson and Tyshawn Taylor have been able to get good quality looks the last two possessions, Kansas, because of its balance and versatility, has options. I mean, I think you try to throw it inside to Robinson. I mean, that's the obvious place to go. But if you can get good quality shots for Taylor and Johnson off the pick and roll situation, you go with that too. And there's a foul on Chapman. Clint Chapman. That's four on Chapman. And the Longhorns in this half. Well, there's been a lot of Jacobin Brown who's made some tough shots. He has not had a really good shooting day. But as you said, the ones he's made have been significant. Chapman has been 
brilliant all day long. And now Tyshawn Taylor, who's had a splendid game, gets a chance to put the lead back in Kansas' favor. Chapman picked up his fourth. Taylor now one more for the tie. That's his first miss today. He's five out of six at the line. seconds to go. Cabongo. Matt Brown guarded by Relaford. Got to defend here without fouling if you're Kansas. You certainly don't want to send Brown back to the foul line. Switch. Well, nice the train by yeah. Clint Chapman. Brown. Tipped. Clean block. Rebound. Now. Here comes Elijah Johnson. One minute to go. Taylor. Off the dribble in the corner. Wimmy doesn't want that shot. Now Rutherford looks inside for Robinson. 45 seconds to go. Back to Tyshawn Taylor. Robinson blocked. Rebound good. Wimmy got it. And a foul. This is a pass, an attempted pass that got deflected. I think Robinson was passing this the whole time. And Whitby got the fortuitous bounce. And he'll have a chance for a three-point play after the timeout. But what action. Wow. Bill Self coaching hard in the Kansas Huddle. Both teams in double bonus. One timeout left. With his basket, gives Kansas a one-point lead. He'll shoot a free throw. And at the line for the year, 84%. He's 7 of 8 today. With 37 seconds remaining. Kansas by two. I think you've got to attack fairly early here so you give yourself a chance if you don't score to get an offensive rebound or extend the game with the foul. But it seems as though Texas is taking its time. Cabongo now. Jacobin Brown picks it up. About a one second differential. Here's Brown off the board. No. Tip no. Kansas ball. Oh, you got to get a foul quicker then. Robinson foul. Well, I thought they were fouled immediately there, Vern. They were trying to, but didn't get it. I didn't mind the shot. It was a really difficult shot for Jacobin Brown. It was done at the right time, but they needed to foul sooner. I mean, a lot of time went off that clock from the time the shot was missed and possession was gained by Kansas to where the foul was committed. And that is the fifth on the freshman, Mike Cabongo. He has fouled out. And he does so with three points. <laughs> Julian Lewis will take his place. Julian Lewis replacing Mike Cabongo. Tough afternoon for Mike Cabongo. Yeah, it was. It's part of the fabric of growth, though, when you're a young player at this level and certainly playing the point guard position. Now, Robinson, not a strong free throw shooter. And I think Texas is going to call the timeout here. Time Give Thomas Texas. Robinson a chance to even think about it more. 8.8 .8 to go. And a two-point game. Well, obviously, depending on what happens here with the free throws, if Texas is able to get a miss or two, because we're in the double bonus, Robinson will get two free throws. If it's a three-point game, then you push it up quickly, and I don't think you call a timeout. Now, Rick might want to, but... He's I out of timeout. He is. Just I, hope, I just looked at it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, you push it up, which actually is probably better. 
in my mind, right. if they do have a chance to tie it or go ahead, I think they've got to be able to push it up, try to get it in the hands of Jacobin Brown, and then he's got to be able to create a shot. Kansas with a win would stay one full game ahead of Missouri. They won on the road at Baylor today, so the Bears have uh, dropped two in a row. Ranked number three coming into this week. And you've got Iowa State, Kansas State, Oklahoma, and Texas trying to even its Big 12 record at three and three. Well, somebody said something funny in the Kansas up. <laughs> well, if he makes both of them, it really puts Kansas in a good spot. But the other thing is if he does miss one or both, Texas has to secure that defensive rebound and be ready to get into some type of play to get a shot. Robinson, as we mentioned, about 50% for the year. And he's 0-2 to today. Well, and I think McClellan would be a guy who might get free if Jacobin Brown gets it. Because now all eyes for Kansas will be on Brown, I think. But Robinson can put his team in a good position if he can knock down both. One more. Justin Wesley replaces Jeff Withy. Robinson shoots one more. Now, if you're Kansas, do you foul at six seconds or under? They don't want to. Jacobin Brown in the corner. No. Rebound. Boy, he got Get pretty, him over. He got a pretty good look at it, too, Brown. Kansas, 69. Texas, 66. That's a pretty good ball game. <laughs> yes, it was. 69-66 for Clark Kellogg for Lundquist. Let's go back to Tracy Wilson. Welcome to the road to the Final Four. Now, Seth, we just saw the conclusion of that Florida State Duke game. I know your heart was killing you. What's well, we got on? three screens here. Is this, is this really <laughs> my job to watch these three games unfolding? First of all, all due credit to uh, Tennessee to pull out the win. Here's what happened at Duke. The freshman, Austin Rivers, ties it up. We're going to overtime, right? Florida State brings it down the court. Michael Snare at the buzzer, and it's clearly before the buzzer. Hits the three-point shot. Florida State celebrates. They're in a, an official review right now to look at it, but clearly he beat the buzzer. The Duke Blue Devils go down the same Florida State Seminoles that embarrassed North Carolina on its own home court. They can also do it on the road. They have now knocked off the two supposedly best teams in the ACC. How and are hot are the Seminoles right now? Very much. We have some late-breaking news. Mike Sisak of the CitizensVoice.com, Luzerne County's largest newspaper, is reporting that he has confirmed sources saying that Joe Paterno is near death. Family members and close friends are being summoned to the hospital to say their final goodbyes. CBS News will keep you updated on the latest developments. Well, that will just about do it for us. Here's a look at what you'll see tonight on CBS. And a reminder, the road to the Final Four continues next Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern. It's a Big 12 matchup featuring Texas at number three, Baylor. Be sure to join us tomorrow for the AFC Championship game on CBS. The Baltimore Ravens take on the New England Patriots with a trip to Super Bowl 46 at stake. And it all begins at 2 Eastern with a special playoff edition of the NFL today. For all of us here at CBS Sports, have a great evening. Unlike any other, the Masters on CBS.